Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using the Pix's favorite stamp set for Mama Elephant. It has some really fun bunny images on it. And I thought I would create a whole scene with two bunnies and also the stump. And then I'd watercolor it. So before I get to the watercoloring, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of stamping. So I'm using a mini Misty tool. This is just a smaller version of the larger Misty that you've seen me use in the past. And the smaller version is a little bit easier to show on camera, so I thought I would use that today. The watercolor paper I'm using is Canson Montval watercolor paper. I picked this paper in particular because I'm going to be doing some masking with my Molotow masking pen, and I know for a fact that the masking fluid plays well with this watercolor paper. So I've cut that watercolor paper to be about four and three quarters uh, tall by five, and let's see, no, six inches wide. So it's about a half inch uh, longer in each direction and it just so happens that it fits perfectly inside the mini misty tool so i'm stamping in versifying black onyx ink or i'm sorry onyx black ink i always get those mixed up and i've stamped the bunny holding the heart once and then i took a big post-it note and put that right over the top and i stamped it again so that i could create a mask now you guys know that i've just moved into my new craft room i'm still getting things in the place where they're supposed to be and my masking paper is uh, missing an action. So I'm using Post-It uh, post to do some masking instead. So I've got that stump that's gonna be stamped directly over that bunny, but since I've masked the bunny's legs off, it's going to protect that area and make it look like the bunny is standing on top of the stump. So I'm getting that stamp all inked up with that onyx black ink. And I'll press down and it's a perfect image. Now one of the reasons why you might want to use a misty tool when stamping onto watercolor paper is that watercolor paper in general, especially if it's a cold press paper, is, has a very rough texture. And so it's kind of difficult to get a clean stamped image using that paper. And with the misty tool, if you end up having a spot where it doesn't stamp perfectly, you can stamp it over again in the same exact area and it will make it so that you have a perfectly stamped image. So I'm using this grid transparency and I'm just gonna get my, <clears throat> excuse me, the second half of my sentiment on there just perfectly. And I'll go ahead and swing the misty shut to pick that stamp up. And then they can remove that transparency sheet and do the stamping as usual. This makes it so that the greeting is on there completely straight. Um, one of the things that I kind of miss having when I use the Misty tools to compare to a compact stamp press is I really love the grid lines on the compact stamp press that helps me get my stamp mounted perfectly as well as having it stamped perfectly. So by using that grid transparency sheet makes it a little bit easier. So I've removed that paper mask and I'm going to do some liquid masking using a Molotow masking pen. I'm just covering up all those areas that I've stamped. I'm doing this because I'm going to be watercoloring a, like a background over the top of it. And I want to make sure that those bunny areas are nice and clean so that I can paint those in a little bit later. So I'm going to be using this watercolor palette from Art Impressions. Um, you guys have seen me use just um, any slick surface, an acrylic block or even a piece of lamination, laminated plastic, something like that. Well, as I was cleaning out my craft room and kind of moving things in, I came across this watercolor palette from Art Impressions, and it's meant to be used with markers, but it works beautifully with distress inks and as well. So if I can find that online, I'll go ahead and link that down in the video description and also in the supply section at my blog. It's a great palette. Um, I've only used it a few times, but I really, really love it. Um, it. It tends to resist staining, so I haven't had any problems with distress ink staining it. So it's been a really great tool. I'm using a size eight silver black velvet brush to brush on some color. And I, I'm, I'm using a little bit of a lighter blue and realized it wasn't fading enough. So I brought in a paper towel and just dabbed off some of that color at the very top. That just softens those edges. And then I'll bring in a little bit more color. I'm gonna bring in some more of that purple. This is Wilted Violet. And I'll just bring that purple up a little bit. And then I've got two other blue colors. I believe it is uh, Faded Jeans and Tumbled Glass. 
and I realized that it needed a little bit of pink so I brought in some picked raspberry just down at the very bottom that's going to give it a little bit of warmth right there at the bottom by the bunnies and then I'm going to go ahead and dry this really really well I'm going to do some water resisting or picking up some areas with water so I want to make sure that's completely dry I'm using my distress sprayer to spray some water into the palm of my hand and then I'll just sprinkle that over the top in a really random fashion and I'll let that kind of settle into the paper and I'll pick up that board make sure that water's moving around you can see the color moving within those puddles and that's when you know it's a good time to pick up the color with the paper towel so I'm dabbing off that color and I get this kind of bleach splotchy look I think it looks really really cool so I'll dry, dry this and once again I want to make sure it's completely dry before I try removing the masking fluid going to be using my uh, Magello Mission Gold watercolor set for the rest of the image today and I'll go ahead and set that aside while I do a little bit of shading underneath the bunnies I decided this would be easier to do while they're still masked so I'm just adding a little bit of a pale gray make sure that's completely dry and then I can use my fingertips to peel off that liquid masking fluid the Molotow masking fluid so I can use my fingers and just rub that off you can definitely use your fingers, but I find that using an adhesive remover or adhesive eraser, I just find that a little bit easier. So I switched to that and it comes off super, super fast and easy. Now if you have an area on your masking fluid where you have some watercolor pigment staying behind that can present a problem, just make sure to wet that area a little bit and dab it up with a paper towel and then make sure everything's dry once more before you start picking up the masking fluid. So I'm going to paint the rest of this image using my Magello Mission Gold watercolors. I'm going to speed up the process and turn on some music. So after all of the painting was done, I removed it from my board and I trimmed down the size just a little bit. It ended up being five and a half inches wide by about four inches tall. I'm prepping the area with a powder tool and then stamping the large thanks from the stamp set in Versamark ink. Sprinkled on some white embossing powder and then I used my heat tool to melt the embossing powder until it was completely smooth. Now this just gives a more interesting greeting by having half of it in white and half of it in black. My card base today is made out of some Nina Solar White cardstock. This is the 110 pound version and I'm scoring that with my Teflon bone folder. I then put some foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor piece and then directly onto the card base. Now one thing I wanted to change on the actual image is that it looked like the cat was frowning to me. So I just grabbed a black pen and just drew a little line at the bottom so it looked like maybe the cat's mouth was open. 
So that's the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.